Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, in TV land. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening. And of course, I'm going to be expecting a lot of questions, a lot of calls from you. We are in a very important part of our development. We are going through in the next three weeks uh, more or less a general election and I would like to interact with you for the purpose of helping you to select the candidates that are best suited for this territory. I want to remind you however despite the name of the show Speak Your Mind you cannot damage in any way the integrity of anybody else who might very well resort to the courts for actions. I will have to take the actions of disconnecting you if you try to do that. I cannot allow you, anybody, any caller to bring on liability to the station nor myself. And for that cause, common sense will rule. And in fact, it is easy sometimes to make those mistakes. So this is why we've got to be so cautious. I myself might, in fact, say things that are not the best without any intention of doing it. But you must understand when you're doing that, I must exercise my rights to protect the station and myself. My people of the British Virgin Islands, the elections, election of candidates for the legislature is not a simple matter. It is the most important responsibility of our voting members of the territory. Votes must, voters must consider very carefully the nominated candidates who are contesting seats in the House of Assembly and vote for the ones who are best qualified for the positions. Apart from academic qualification, the single other qualification to be considered is the dedicated contribution the candidate has made to the social, educational, economical, and national growth and development of the country during his or her lifetime. Voters must not be led astray by one nice soothing jingles heard over radio and television nor by two sweet-sounding promises that cannot be fulfilled. Candidates must address the issues and realistically say how they are going to address the problems. Do not let the false boasting of parties fool you. Let your good, better, or best judgment guide you to choose the candidates that can best govern your country. You need to elect the best 13 of the candidates based on the prudent use of your best judgment. Remember that failing to choose wisely now is failing to protect the future generations to come. This is the message 
and advice of yours truly, Edmund Gregory Maduro, your territorial candidate to the people of the BVI. One, by working together, we can remain the masters of our homes. Two, we must take back our children's birthrights that was given away to buy water by our government. Three, we must protect and defend our lawful rights to access and use of our beaches. Four, we must manage and run our own hospital if medical care is to remain affordable. Five, we must now develop our own lands rather than sell them. Six, we must maintain free education for our children. Seven, we must protect the jobs of our people. Eight, we must control the development, uh, we must control the demographic growth and development of our country by maintaining a healthy balance. Nine, above all, we must defend our God-given rights to protect our rights to serve the one true and only living God. 10. We must make the presence of our Jehovah God presence to be observed um, about, all, uh, about, about all other gods in, other home, in our homes, our public um, schools, and the entire community. Ladies and gentlemen, that is only the beginning. We are going to have more, more information to be brought to you from time to time. And I'm going to open this show early because what I would like tonight is to get questions from you. You question me. And I, to the best of my ability, would give you answers and you will judge my capabilities and my qualifications by the answers I gave you. There are lots of questions and I'm going to declare this show open right now. You call, you text, I hope I've learned the way to get your text, but you call and I will try my best to answer your questions. So the show is now open and you can call or you can text. But there are lots of questions out there, ladies and gentlemen. Should all candidates be elected at large or as territorial candidates? Should the district system be maintained or done away with? Should the BVI seek independence now? As some people are suggesting, should the Premier be elected at large, as a lot of people are saying? Should a moratorium be placed on granting of belonger status and naturalization? Is the government doing enough to assist BVI landers to develop their own assets such as land and businesses? Is, oh, we got a call? You reach, speak your mind, please go ahead. Yes. Good night. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello? First of all, good evening. Good evening, caller. I wouldn't make you a call. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You, 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 we, we in connection. But what is your question or your suggestion? On TV and radio. And I want to know if these political persons are concerned about how to be Well, that's something that has to be left to the judgment of the voters. Because people would say a lot. People would say this, and people would say that, and people would say the other. But as I've said a little earlier, 
or, can, or, or electorates must examine every candidate, not just by what they say at election time, but examine what they have done for the country over their lifetime. Have they done things to help the people? Have they done things to hinder the people? That is going to be the most important aspect. Because you know, nowadays if you listen to some people who try to talk, number one, they don't want anybody to hear the voice because they figure people will detect who they are. And number two, they're afraid to express themselves because they're afraid of victimization. But this is no time to be cowards. This is a time when people must get up. Nonetheless, we are going to have to judge our candidates on the basis of their performance during the lifetime. Do you agree with me? I agree with you 100%. And what So, is there any other question you want to ask me? My only question is this. I wonder when they will have election or how are they going to set the election for... When we're going to do what? Are we going to set the election for the government to come to vote? Well, that is always, the, the government always tries to do that. And I think it is fair. Because St. Thomas and our, our BYU landers who live in St. Thomas have the right to come home and vote. The Constitution makes that distinctly clear. So it is good to see that the governments over the past have been concerned in making sure that that, a bit, that a right is easily exercised. Any more questions? Hello? Anything else? Any more questions? Hello? Okay, it seems as if you have fulfilled your mission. So we want to say thank you for the call. And then we would wait on somebody. Thanks a lot for your call. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there are lots of questions out there. We seem to have a text. Um, we seem to have that text. Uh huh. That one isn't coming true. Let me see, delete, uh, replay. Let me see if you could get it. Anyway, that we, we, we have some problems with that. We haven't been able to come through. But nonetheless, uh, let's see if we get in anywhere here. That looks like we have somebody there. Let me see. Let me see what happens. It says, I am a single mom with five kids. No help. Two of my kids' father um, died since four years and ago, and others in getting no help from their dads. And up to know these kids ain't get no books but um, um, let's see they ain't get any books so that is the situation with that um, one text that I've been able to read and uh, it's as simple as that so let me see if we have any other message there in the meantime, when we, when we ask, okay, boy, it looks like she's giving me some trouble here, but um, let's see now what we got there. Anyway, we seem to be uh, in some little trouble there. So you can now make your calls or your other texts if possible. Um, certainly, oh, we got a caller. You reach, speak your mind, please go ahead. Hello? Yes, hi, good evening, Edmund. Good evening, sir, caller. Yes, I, I have a 
for you. Um, if you're elected in, what are you going to do to increase revenues for the country? Well, you have asked a very, very important question. And it's one of the hardest questions to solve. As you know right now, we are going through not just a local depression, but a global depression. And if you were listening to the news a couple of days ago, you would see that one of the wealthiest countries in the world, Switzerland, was going through some serious decision. It is the one thing that everybody elected are going to have to pull their heads together and find ways and means of creating revenue. And one of the things I would say, Carla, we will have to do is to go out there um, and try to get um, additional investors to come in, if there are any investors at this stage. There's another thing that I have deep in my mind to do, is that I believe we can use a lot of the trust companies here to help develop our own properties, our lands, and to build houses, etc., for the use of our visiting guests, the tourists. And by that way, we will be able to create some uh, work so that our people would be able to get something to feed their children. So that is one of the ways in which we can move forward. Because so we, are, we are already... Um, getting investment, you're talking about capital investment? Big pardon? So when, when you talk about investment, um, you see it's important to have foreign investment in the country? Yes, we can, we can, we have the lands. And there are opportunities where we can use the land and get people who have money stored here in some of the... Um, trust companies, etc. Because that's what other people are doing. They come, they go to these trust companies, they borrow the money, they buy the land. They borrow the money and they build what they have to build. So it is only wise for us to learn from what we know. Don't you agree with me? Okay. Okay, thank you, Edmund. Thank you, Carla. Thanks for that call. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Please put your call through. I want to dialogue with you. I want to know what bothers you. I want to know what I would have to do. And the only way I'm going to do that is by you talking, is by you saying, is by you asking me questions, and by I asking you questions. Dialogue is the key. I could never forget one day when um, Ms. Madita Wheatley and I had a show on ZBI about the single word dialogue. And people up to this day will remind me of that show because we brought out very well then. Well, I must say, Miss Wheatley, she was very good, very articulate. She handled English language quite well. And because of that, we were able to move forward. I want to dialogue with you. I want to talk with you. I want to know what you want me to do. It's not just what I want. It's what you, the people, want. We have to work together. We have to think together, and we have to try, by working together, find ways and means of improving our economy. As I was talking about questions, there are lots of questions. And um, um, one of them, number seven, is the by water deal. Is it good for the BVI? Well, we've discussed that a lot, and I know fairly well what you think. Number eight. Is Caribbean economic integration good for the BVI? We know something is being done about that. We know we belong to the common area of the Caribbean. And all these are things we're going to have to begin to think about because it's our local area. It's the people we have to live with. It's the people we have to work with. It's the people who have shared a similar life to us. And it's only fair that we think about what our relationship with them should be. Question number nine. Should prayers and other religious activities be taken out of our public schools? It's a serious situation, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope that you're all going to address it one with it. Oh, we got a caller? You reach, speak your mind, please go ahead. Good night, sir. Hello? Good night. Good night, Good night caller. Yeah, one important question. Uh huh. How when I'm a child born here, and the mother and father, if I may, they can get passport. I've tried to answer that question a million times. 
The law that governs the issue of passport to a person like that is governed under the British Nationality Act. It's a responsibility of the, his, her, his Excellency, the Governor. But I want to share with you that um, if that child is born here by a father or uh, a uh, mother of the British Virgin Islands, we should not really allow that British Nationality Act to uh, interfere with the normal life as much as it does. I've been told just recently that there was a child born and they couldn't even get a travel document to travel out of the British Virgin Islands. And that is inhumane. We have to find ways and means of dealing with that issue because even our own children, not because their mother or their father might not be a Bivailander, but we must find ways of dealing humanly with such aspects. And it's going to take a lot of thinking and dialogue with the United Kingdom government. Does that satisfy you? Yes, okay. We have to get a change. Right. Well, good evening. Good evening. Yes. I, might, I might add as well, yes. if, you know, if you're still there. Go ahead, yes. That um, he's gone, but he's the, the issue of independence is the big difference. Because in an independent country, uh, the citizens, regardless of where they're born, they're a member of that country. That's not true, Courtney. You were born in the UK, which is an independent country, and you are not a citizen of the UK. Except for the UK, as I know. It, not only the UK, the whole oh, of Europe. The whole of Europe, but yes. in a number of in the entire Caribbean. If in, in, in the entire Caribbean, um, if you're born in the in we, one we of the countries. Control. Yeah, go ahead. You reach, speak your mind, please go ahead. Good night, Courtney. Good night, sir. Good night, Manu. Good night, caller. How are you? We're Good trying time. to stay alive. You still well in the politics? Yep. Well, now we're running for politics. You don't see how fast our legs are going? I wonder how much vote I could give you. Uh, that we'll appreciate that so much. Well, you know you have five votes, right? What you about have... if I, I... Could I give Maduro the four or five? No, you have one. You only could give Maduro one vote, man. You have, <laughs> you have four at last, and you have one... What are you trying district, to know? You're, trying to, you're trying to tickle Maduro? <laughs> no, man, no, man, we, we want blood, you know. Yep, yep, we got to work together, Carla. <laughs> okay, Carla, okay. Carla. We look, we're going to look for your support. All right, Courtney wants to say something to you. Don't run yet. Yeah, yeah, have a good night. Oh, okay, uh, all right. Okay, thank you. We're hoping that the, the, the persons that are going out to vote, they're going to really examine the persons who are running mm -hmm. and really look at the issues mm -hmm. at hand, look at everything that they're saying. Right and then make up their mind. Courtney, you're absolutely correct. That's one of the things I was saying a bit earlier before you came, mm -hmm. that the most important thing in this election is the vote. Yeah. And each candidate, each electorate has to carefully look at everybody who's running mm -hmm. and take the best of what is there. Yeah. It's not a party thing. It's not a party thing all the way. Mm -hmm. It's getting those candidates who are best qualified to do your work. Exactly. Yeah. So we have another call. After this call, we'll take a break. So you reach speak your mind. Would you please go ahead? Hello? Hello? Please turn your TV down. Yeah, turn your TV down, please. Hello? Yeah, turn your TV down or off. You, it's, making, it's making a serious noise. Everybody. If you don't turn your TV down, we, you have to turn. Everybody come on the TV, huh? but nobody is speaking about the uh, solid waste department. Why? The solid waste department? Yeah. Will you go ahead and speak about the solid what, waste what department? What would you like us, what, what question would you like to put into us again about the solid waste department? You should look at the way because we are the, we are the cleaners of the whole BBI. That's correct. We are the cleaners of the whole BBI. And we saw our best to make the country successful. But yet, nobody put in food for me because uh, majority are from here. You understand? Yes, I'm understanding. Majority are from here. And so nobody put a food. But at the end of the day, when we're talking about beautiness of the country, I believe it's solid one department. Because if we check from downtown down to Paco Ponce later, we try our best to help the nation. And so I'm doing government to, to turn around and look after me. Because all I know to let you know is that nobody will guide 
you want to get the letter. Yeah, I don't, I don't. And we don't that little to zero, you mm -hmm. can't get your thousand. Well, Carla, you're correct, you know, in order to keep the country... Thank you. In order to keep thank the country... You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. In order to keep the country clean, we need dedicated workers. That is definitely true. And I, I think that the guys in the solid ways have been doing a, a very important job of keeping the place looking clean, you know, throughout the territory. There's one other issue with, it, with, with those guys and with public works and with a number of other departments, though, and that is the issue of daily rated workers. For, we, we have people working for daily rated for 20 years. I think it's time that we, it's not economical, it's, it's, it's very demeaning to the people who have to do it and it's really not economical for the government to do it. And when we come back we can talk some more yeah, about but that. Before we go, I want to add, what, to add to what you said, Courtney, okay. that the people working in solid ways mm -hmm. are people who are indispensable Yes. The country cannot do without them. And they should they work are over doing a, a time. job. They're doing a job that demands a higher pay yes. than the average man. Yeah. And I would really advocate them getting a wage that is appropriate to the work that they're doing. Yes. And I would support the South for a long time. I've been trying to say that on my show, mm -hmm. even though we might not say it as often as possible. Yeah. Solid waste is indispensable, and we have to treat the people who work in solid waste right. Yeah. We're going to go take a break now, ladies and gentlemen. we got some text. Mm -hmm. As soon as we get back, we'll try to read them and work with you. Mm -hmm. We want to answer your questions so that you'd see where our position would be if you elect us to office. We'll take a break now, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I am Tanisha Harrigan-Scott, and I am here to bring you some exciting news from Digicel. Now you can talk more and text more for only $15. A great new price point from Digicel, the Bigger Better Network. Have you heard? When you top up $15 or more, you get incredible deals with Digicel. Get 100 free minutes, unlimited SMS, and free weekends for seven days to local Digicel numbers. Top up $15 again, and it will automatically be extended for another seven days. For more information, drop by our store or visit our website at www.digicelbbi.com. Digicel terms and conditions apply. Yes, we have a text here, lady. Um, I do not think Maduro involved in that thing. The need to find what? Go down. No, go down here. The need to find. Um, yeah. The need to find uh, what? The need. The, the need to find the real people who, who in it mm -hmm. and leave the man alone. Mm -hmm. What were they talking about? You don't make no sense. Not you, not, not you, another Maduro. Another Maduro. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's uh, the, the, the drug thing they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we, we are not, you see, this is a we, matter that is through the courts. And we will not. And we cannot um, talk about it. Yeah. So then we go to the next text, Courtney. What is one, sir? I do not think Maduro, no, that's something. The same thing again? Yeah, that's the same thing. Okay. okay. I would like... I would like water to my home. Applied three years ago and nothing has been done. I believe that every every home in the BVI should have access to street water. That is so true. Carla, you are so absolutely correct mm -hmm. because we cannot live a healthy life without water. Mm -hmm. We cannot even live without water. Um, then we got that. Congrats, Mr. Maduro. You're doing an excellent, and and so and I'm so pleased you're you're teaching your people the way to go, especially when we go to the polls. 
That's another good call. That's what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. Why uh, our government allowing the U.S. to lock up our locals is, is now we will be broke. Well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, there's something called international law. And there's law in order. So seems like anybody can run as an independent. As long as you're over 18 years and you're a voter and you meet other qualifications, you can run as a candidate, whether independent or otherwise. He's 21. As long as you're 21, you're sorry. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Courtney. Mm -hmm. Anything there, Courtney? Mm -hmm. Any other call, text? When I, when I child born here, yeah, and the mother and father are not from here, yeah, they're not given a passport. Where you born is where you're from. That's what you might think, but that's not the British law. You cannot force the British people to do what you think. It is something that is going to take serious negotiation if you would ever be able to get it solved at all. You, you, when I child born here. That's the same. That's the same one. The same one. Yeah. Okay. So that's it? That's it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your text. We have a lot to think about. We have a lot to do. There are a number of things we're going to have to negotiate. They're very sensitive. They're very hard on the lives of the people who live here. And we're going to really have to try our best. And it's going to start at the polls. You're going to have to pick the people who are going to listen to you. How many of the people really answer your question when you call? You reach speak your mind. Would you please go ahead? Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's me again. Yes. Good evening, good evening. Yes. This August, they come and tell Sonogre Department we should come out to work, which is we can't refuse because it's our daily work. Uh -huh. So the one the one day department we come out to work as well. But because they don't pay me over time, so a lot of the goods are the income. Okay? May I understand, a sum for it, I'm going to do what government tells yes. me to do. Mm -hmm. A sum for it, and I don't have to work. But the one thing worries me a lot, government is supposed to put a food to take it away. Because imagine, we are behind the truck, turning to the runabout. Then they go in the runabout. Because the time I went by the, uh, by the hospital, mm -hmm. to let the police leave the traffic mm -hmm. for them to last over. They come in and we all, we do, we can't leave for double English. We can't leave it to another day. We have to clean it because it's our job. We clean it all every, every year. So, to me, I believe government to... But Carla, are you, are, you not, are you not saying the same thing you said in the last call? No, he's, talk, he's talking about over time. And the fact that they don't pay them over time. Okay, they should grab the traffic to win to claim to win the runabout. Then, they should pass, because they should pass through my base and go the other side. So that we could claim... I'm sure that could be done. That's just a matter of lo logistics. I down, you know, but you were saying they should allow them to my clean one side and then clean the other side. They should not clean both sides at the same time. Yeah. Why government can't stop the car? Why the, the, the police can't stop the traffic? They could. Find the police and go through the traffic for me. They the could. They could. They just need a little bit of yeah, coordination. What do you say? They want to stop the traffic. Yeah, they need to stop the traffic. After the parade. After the parade. After the parade. Yeah. Yeah. They're supposed to stop the traffic. Oh, he's talking about yeah. the yeah. festival. Yeah. 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 They should. They should do it for you, but it, it sounds like it needs a little... I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But yes, Carla, you already made your point. Honestly, you already made your point. Okay. You already made your point. Honestly, you already made your point. Okay. Thank, you for your Thank you very much. Well, Courtney, I think he said something about overtime. Yeah. The, the, and I believe they must and should be paid the overtime. But, but Edmund, we've been hearing that the uh, government has a policy where they, 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 don't, they give time off. No, because of the, I guess the hard economic It's going times. to be difficult with um, the people in solid waste. 
But it, because it, you, with employees, period. With employees, period. Yeah, it's because, quite true. Yeah, because um, you but know. Um, in particular with the solid waste, I believe those people must be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. They work hard, mm -hmm. and their lives are endangered because they're removing things from the street that can contaminate their bodies, and make man, them I have sick, to say, and I have, even I have, cause them to die. I have to say it again. I, I think those those people that work in those kind of dangerous conditions should have a lower. We, um, uh, of time for, for retiring, one, and two, there should be health checks for them regularly. And well, three, the health checks should be free too. It should be free too. And right. three, I think that you shouldn't have anybody working for 20 years temporary. No, that's... A, I think that's, that's abuse that, of the system. That's what the gentleman was saying? That is abuse of the system. It's most abuse, of those, it's most abuse of, those, of it, man. It's abuse. There's still guys in public works working as... The as, labor as, code as makes temporary. it clear that you have so many years or so much time, what they call it, um, probationary, I think, uh, yeah. whatever it is. You well, but don't even jump on that because yeah. we have people working for six, eight years um, um, acting. All that nonsense happens. All of that is all of that is yeah. abuse of the system. Well, that's one of the things, callers and listeners, that's one of the things I intend to attack. You cannot have people working for so long as a... What you said, Courtney, again? As a temporary worker? As a worker? temporary worker, it is wrong. It's inhumane. It it's is bad. It is, it is, Everything is wrong with it. Yeah, it, it there it, are a lot of things low, you need to... It is low morale you would get from the, from the individuals, exactly. from the employees. And then it, 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 it speaks terrible right. about people who know they have their pension coming their way. There's a number All of things in the civil service we're going to deal with. We're yeah. going to have to deal with it because people are not being treated fairly. Just as we have to deal with things in, under the labor code, where Th people those elected officials who are doing that, they know fully well they have their pension coming right. to them. Right. So why are they refusing mm -hmm. to regularize those daily rated workers? Exactly. Any record? We got some call, uh, some, some text. text? You let's yeah. see what we got. Yeah, we want to get as much as we can. We have that. Courtney, mm -hmm. whenever expats retire and they are not resident they are not resident they do they, they do get a pension good night brother Edmund I am enjoying the show tonight do you think that the government should wait until uh, school reopens to be fixing the road in Bogus Bay when this um, when when the kids were on break hmm. the, uh, the caller texter I fully agree with you it's a nuisance that are there right now that should have been done long long ago mm -hmm. What can I do to help my children if the fathers are dead and I need school books? You hit a point that I'm going to continue with. I believe from the age of 5 to 15, as the law says, education is free and the government has to find a way of getting those books free for the children. I, I would re realize that and I would accept the fact that the parents should be able to buy the copy books to help. But when it comes to textbooks, the, the government must buy those textbooks. That is what a free education calls for. As, right? If Cuba could do it. Especially if one textbook is over $115. Imagine. Yeah. The books are very expensive. Very expensive. And another like thing business. that probably might be happening as far as I understand, I can't substantiate this, is that in fact, they're changing the books ever so often. They are. And that shouldn't happen. They should use a standard text for quite some time so that it makes it easier on the government to purchase mm. and easier for the kids to have books all the time. Mm. Good night, Edmund. I heard you just said uh, that the guys cleans what? The guys cleans the street deserve a better pay. Uh, what about we who work in the sewage? 
Same thing. Same thing. Same thing, car. Same thing, texture. Same thing. You are and, walking and, and in, electricity in, the same you're, thing. You're walking in very dangerous positions. And electricity, electricity is the, the same, same thing. thing. You must be fairly paid for the work you do. Um, waiting to hear a politician say that um, what a, you've gone too far. Waiting to hear that a politician said they will not take thousands you're going too fast they will not take thousands dollars to live to, oh they won't take two thousand dollars to live in their own house Carla Texter I believe you're absolutely correct that two thousand dollars a politician is taken to live in his own house should be used to buy books for these mothers and who are having these problems, I don't care what anybody say it's about. My, it's not two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars a month. Two thousand dollars a month. That's what I mean. That's what yeah. they're thinking about. Twenty-four thousand dollars a year. Twenty-four thousand dollars a year. That thing is close to a million dollars for the end of the four years. That can buy the books. What do you think about the drug raid? In the, I cannot talk about the drug raid because it's going through the courts. We have a call. Yeah, we take the call. Yeah. Good evening. You have speak your mind. Go right ahead, please. Right. Go Good ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, I want to ask you a question. Please. Do you think we should be paying electricity through a charge and still paying for coron? You're, well, you're talking about You're it. talking about the extra money that they added on to the bill? Last month I paid $54 for my light bill. Uh -huh. And this month what just gone, I paid $114. Something is wrong. The Something is wrong because the, the cost the of fuel has charge. gone up like the that. Sir charge. I went but the surcharge. I argue about this surcharge and no one to study me. I can't understand how the surcharge is that high. Something is wrong somewhere. I, I got to end up paying the 114 because I won't have no call on. Yeah. I feel, I feel I, your pain. I, I had to do the, I had to do the same thing. To complain to, and these people just knocking your ball. I feel your pain. I called match up my fridge the other day. I don't have a fridge now. In two, in two other Caribbean countries, the, the, the government side fit to take off the surcharge altogether off of the bill. We're asking our government if they can see it fit to do that here because it, we are going through some rough economic times. Of course. And, and coming up this month, they say um, the fuel charge will go more. But is the fuel charge really going up? It doesn't go up at the gas station that much. Well, anyway, I, I was I, going nice. Carl, right, thank thanks. you for that call. We're having a lot of problems with fuel. Mm -hmm. and who I think electricity is just robbing the poor people of this country. Uh -huh. And we don't have nobody to complain to. Well, well, well Carla, the, the way I understand it is that when they signed the contract to supply the, the, the diesel, the, the diesel would have been one price. And then when there's a difference between the price that they sign and the price that the diesel is now, then you have a fuel surcharge. So and they, they spread it over all of us that buy electricity. Now, Why are we paying for coal and still paying for fuel charge? But you see, Courtney, I think there's also a point. I cannot see really surcharge being that high. Mm. Because what the public should, what they should be showing the public is what the cost of the fuel was before the contract, at the beginning of the contract. Mm -hmm. And they should have a, a, a obligation to show the people to show as the it public. goes up, to show the public. To show the public. As it's going up, what they're paying for. But, but you see, Carl, we have a, a monopoly. And when you have a monopoly, they don't usually answer well to the public. And that is what we're trying to avoid in a number of instances, having to deal with monopolies. Mm -hmm. So if they say um, $200 your fuel charge, you have to pay $200 or you don't have no coron. Exactly. Do you think that's fair? No, it's not fair. Okay. Well, that's all I got to tell you. Well, I, I feel your pain and I, I, hope you, I hope you're with me lobbying to get it right. changed. You got to get some well, changes. I about this month from paying $54 to 114 I can't see how it happens. The, the, the cost of the fuel hasn't doubled. If the cost of the fuel had doubled, then we would hear something on international news about it. Not only that, the, the gas, the gasoline at the at the pump for the cars, that would have to be have, have a significant it, it change. Be, it would reflect the whole It would have situation. a significant yeah. change. Yeah. 
But and, I tell and, you, and, and, in, and in addition to that, there must be an extra cost to get the gasoline to the to the cars because you have to truck it to the gas stations. Yeah. Whereas to the corporation, they just it's hook it straight. They pump straight to the to the to the, the um to the electricity corporation down in Parkwood Pond. But you know, Courtney, too, we need to go back. Um, my my gas bill used to be something like thirty five dollars every time I fill my tank. Mm -hmm. And coming to think about it now, there's some serious problems that I don't know how we're going to solve them. My gas bill now is seventy four, seventy odd dollars. So obviously the the but fuel has doubled. And and we don't have any weights and measure. Um, and we don't have any weights and measures to deal with it. To, to, to deal with it, and yeah. that is so sad. You know, because we got some text, yeah. yeah, but it's, that is so sad because it made yeah. me remember how a, a fellow used to put some lead under the uh, scale. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you're laughing. You well know. You well know what you're talking I about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what we have there now? People, public works can't repair roads. Um can't repair roads. What else? They're going too fast. People, public, well, can't be repair roads properly. They need to train and, and they need to train, um, they need to train, go ahead, go up again. They need to be trained and oh, they need proper material. They fix this week and rain fall and next week the road the road is when you dig up again mm -hmm. money loss mm -hmm. um carla i got your message and i i know you have you're absolutely correct mm -hmm. i've seen roads fixed this week and next week mm -hmm. they're in the same condition after rain again mm -hmm. we have a we call. got a caller yeah. good evening if we speak your mind go right ahead please mm -hmm. hello good evening good, good evening, evening call. Call something that affects most people who live in the BCI. You, you have to speak up. You have to speak, put the phone a little closer to your mouth and speak a little louder. Hello? Yes, yes. that's nice. The thing is, you live in an apartment. Nothing is being done to the apartment. But after you live in it in a year or two, sometimes even five years, it raised by a hundred dollars or more. And you have to pay it because you need somewhere to live. So I think right now as we are into that election thing, they need to put something into place for them things, even though the house don't belong to the, the who is in charge of, but then they have to do something because I don't think this is good. Carla, I've been asked questions like that all the time and I used to be reluctant to side with the, the, the tenant, mm -hmm. but I have seen something happen to somebody close to me in the last couple of months and we need to have tenancy laws to govern the way these tenants deal with the poor people. That is something that needs to be worked upon and I totally agree with you. Yes. Courtney, I see like, they're, 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 they're like kicking people out of the house as yeah. if they're dogs. Yeah. They're going well, to cutting off the electricity and the electricity is in the name of the tenant. Yeah. And they have lawyers who are advising them that they can do all of that. We need laws in this country, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to help and work for it, to protect, control and protect, to protect the, tenant. the tenants. Yes, yeah. they need some protection. Yeah. I have seen too much of it with my own eyes. There was, there was one gentleman who told me he lost his job, and, okay. then, and then they were telling him he had to leave his house. He was telling him, hold on until he gets the money to pay them. Exactly. They're saying to him they're going to put him out of the house. That to me, that is, you know, that is really... You need really, tenancy laws. You need tenancy laws. You need tenancy laws. Well, let's see what else we have in the text mm -hmm. there, man. What are we down to there now? We've been... Mm, no. We've been police by the police who is police in the police. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. The police who is policing the police who is making sure people of the VI is being treated is being treated fair in the in the Virgin Islands. Uh, in the courts of the Virgin Islands. The people in authority is 
something. The people in the church, you go up again. Go, you know, go ahead and go up again. The people in the country uh, is abusing the power, their power, um, from police, court, judge, or magistrate. You're going up too fast, Courtney. Mm -hmm. um, once the they need they're abusing their powers. What the person is trying to say that the courts never been unfair to people. Mm -hmm. That the courts are abusing their powers mm -hmm. and dealing with people who are going before them. Mm -hmm. And um, that is something I don't have the evidence for, etc. But certainly the, if that is so, it needs to be looked at. And, you know, if it is so, it needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Who is responsible for the cutting of bushes at the side of the road? In the district, the di the, 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 the district uh, representative usually um, contracts with somebody through the public works department. I Courtney, think. that mm -hmm. nonsense has to stop. Mm -hmm. Public works is responsible for that, mm -hmm. and the public works should be um, uh, controlling that. Mm -hmm. We put in too much into the hands of district representatives and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The district representative has the right to go to public works and say, look, mm -hmm. here's Mr. So-and-so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. He needs a job, he's unemployed, etc., etc. But the district representative is not the Minister of Public Works, nor is he the engineer. Mm -hmm. We have too much, um, what would you call it? Bad, too much bad government, too much political <laughs> interference. We missed a call. Mm -hmm. Please call back. This is a live show, so if you, if you, know, you, just, miss, if you know you just missed us, just mm -hmm. dial back again. Where's the good? I would like to know what the government is doing about food price right where is doing a food price going every day is going up. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying that you want to know what government is doing about uh, price control. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this price control is something that most democratic governments looked at look at very reluctantly mm -hmm. because you know, it's hard to get into the individual businesses, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. um, it's like you bring to my mind now the fact that the taxi business is controlled. Their rates are controlled. By the government. By the government. Yeah. And the funny thing is, even though the cost of fuel has doubled, the poor taxi fella doesn't have any way of recovering his money. No. But, he can't carry up his but price. Fuel, people can he can't put on a rider, but the fuel people can put on the rider. So here's an injustice, and I could see with what the caller is saying, but you also got to look at the businessman too, mm -hmm. because he can only sell at a price based on what he pays for it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very sensitive thing, and I want to think that if we can have more competition, mm -hmm. where you'll have more local retailers, and stopping the wholesaler from wholesaling and retailing mm -hmm. under the same roof, and giving the other people the opportunity to fair business practices, then you'll get the right competition mm -hmm. and the stability of prices will be maintained. I think so. So we have a line... Fair the, competition. We, yeah, we have a line from the UK which talks about unfair business practices. Mm -hmm. In the United States, it's called... Um, the Sherman Antitrust Law. The Antitrust Law. Mm -hmm. So those things need to be put in place to make sure we don't have a monopoly where the wholesaler could retail at his own whims and fancy and by that way we will have some control but i think it's really difficult and perhaps unfair to go around controlling all the prices in the territory we should leave some of it up to competition but i agree with the, public, uh, the person who made the tax it's a serious situation and we need to find a way to deal with it do we have enough? Mm -hmm. The electricity fuel charge is to pay civil servant salary. <laughs> Don't be fooled. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> good, even, good evening. Good evening, caller. Man. Caller disconnected. He left. He got disconnected somehow. Please call again. Maybe just calling to check to see if it's a live show. It is a live show. Yeah. Um. Do we have any more texts? Okay, okay. It's the same one? Yeah, it's a specific salary. Mm -hmm. Go for that though. 
Um, my comment is to the prices. My comment is to the prices of everything in the uh, in the British Virgin Islands. Well, Carla, I can see your point. The, the cost of living in the BBA ain't, ain't low. We have one of the highest cost of living in the world. And it's not easy to really control. Um, this is why uh, we're going to need to find ways and means to control the cost. For instance, the cost of a, tra a trailer from United States to um, from United States mainland to United States Virgin Islands in some places is twelve hundred dollars, but when they come to the British Virgin Islands, eighteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. The bigger container is eighteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. in Saint Thomas, but when it comes to the BBA, it's twenty eight hundred dollars. Right. And I don't see why we could not have a long time ago regulated something. Good evening. Yeah. You have reached. Good night. You have to turn your television down, please. Better you turn it off. It's the law, yeah. Hello, good night. Good night. Um, I have to say that I've been hearing to all the politician manifesto. Uh -huh. And they're saying that everybody is saying that they want to establish businesses in the British Virgin Islands to increase, you know. What do you want to establish businesses? Or what's not, but they're not saying. How to develop the youth because if they do all these businesses, who's gonna run it? The same youth, right? Yeah. We have youth lingering around, they need to implement a law that states that just like how people that not come here or go to immigration, they need to do that because if they're not in school, then they have to be in the workforce. That's right, you're making and a good point. Yes, it will also decrease crime. Well, let me say this to you, Carla. You're, you're making one of the most important points If you're not going to school, tonight. you should have to go and register and show up at the immigration, the uh, labor department on a daily basis. Well, let's put it this way. Once you left school, you have to get work. Yeah. And that's the whole situation. And the caller is raising a very, but, but very good point. raising a good point because yeah. the labor department can assist these people in, in finding jobs. You're right. They should, be, they should be at the doorstep every day. But people are complaining to us all the time. They're saying that when you go there, my dear lady, you don't get any help. You don't get any help. You get abused. As a matter of fact, you get abused. They tell you because, come back. Um, a lot of crimes are going on and people are getting hurt. People are work out there working for their honest dollar and they have some people coming and just taking it in one day. Yes. This is not fair. These people need to go and look a job and they need to implement a law that says that people don't need to be on the road lingering around. That's that's a good point you're making, my dear. Thank, it's a, very much. thank very you, much. Carla. It's a serious point, and I'm glad people like you are beginning to stand up and speak out because that's one of the ways we're going to have to help solve our crimes by finding work for people to do. Mm -hmm. Good evening. You're speaking, man. Go right ahead, please. Hello. Good night. Mr. Maduro, um, you know the the government is issuing some work exemption, which is um indefinite. So um, one like me, I've been living here like for twenty years. Okay. And I have an indefinite work exemption. Okay. Yes, I still have to go to immigration department and both time. And don't don't you think in a position like that that one should be able to to vote in a country where you live in for 20 years, you're paying tax and social security. What's your view about that? I think, I think your situation should have been sorted out already. I, I honestly feel if you live in a country, Edmund, for 20 years, and and it's similar to the situation I was talking about, working um, temporary for 20 years. These kind of things are very un, unhumane. You see, the thing about it, Courtney, is that you have governments over the past that were too thin-skinned and will not put the proper regulation in place. Yes. Um, that should have been a joint effort between immigration and labor. Well, the whole thing, what a lot of people do understand, when you come into the country, any country, you get a permit to do certain things. Yes. 
And it's not really the Labor Department that's in control of the person being here. It's the Immigration, it's the immigration department. department, that's right. And um, the only thing the Labor Department is really responsible for is, number one, to make sure that BY landers are employed in preference to non BY landers. Mm, and we know they're following on the job on that big time. Well, a lot of people are complaining that, in fact, they don't get any help, as you just said, when mm -hmm. they go to the, de the, the department. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's complaint that there's conflict of interest mm -hmm. where persons working in the department have agencies dealing with the issue of work permits. Yes. So how are we going to have any reduction in crimes but with Edmund, that sort of behavior? Well, Edmund, the people who make this show possible are begging for a break. <laughs> yes. So we're going to have to take a break and we'll be right back with you. bring you some exciting news from Digicel. Now you can talk more and text more for only $15. A great new price point from Digicel, the bigger, better network. Have you heard? When you top up $15 or more, you get incredible deals with Digicel. Get 100 free minutes, unlimited SMS, and free weekends for seven days to local Digicel numbers. Top up $15 again, and it will automatically be extended for another seven days. For more information, drop by our store or visit our website at www.digicelbbi.com. Digicel terms and conditions apply. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're right back with you. It's a wonderful show. People are asking. Mm -hmm. People are texting. Um, Courtney, you had something to say? You want yeah, to I, was, to I was going to say that, um, Edmund, I was thinking about that, that district allocation that our um, representatives get. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you, if you multiply it out by the years, if, you, if, you, if you're getting 170,000 and mm -hmm. you multiply it by four years, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's 600 and and eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars for four years. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Courtney, it's, it's it, it is close to seven million dollars. No, it's, you it's better check it. 000. It's thirteen of them. It's thirteen of them is a lot. It's the thirteen of them. Yeah, let's have a call. Yeah, it's close to seven. Yes, million good evening. You're speaking, man. Go right ahead, please. Yes, good night. Sir. Good show. Thank good. you. Two things I'd like to talk about. Now, before I heard you guys talking about the cost of shipping to the VI. The cost of shipping to Tortola. Yes. What about the cost of shipping to Fiji? Now, the reason why I bring up this point is a very good I, point. I breed dogs, okay? It's I a will good point. I go right way and have to pay fifty-two dollars for a bag of dog food. But hmm. from Prince in Virgin Gorda, mm -hmm. I get the same bag of dog food for twenty-eight dollars. You oh, kidding? Wow. But but of course you know something, Carla? I was on at the off one day and I saw this a load of stuff coming down. Uh -huh. And I asked the taxi guys, how come things coming from Virgin Garda? He said, because exactly. it's cheaper, you could go to Virgin Garda and buy things cheaper, then you can get them in road. I want to know how the mainland mm -hmm. could have it wow. cheaper than Lilwood Beach. Not to say that one or two dollars different. It's I mean, twice as much. Uh, exactly. The other point but, that was made, Well, like well Carla, I, I hope the people listening to the show start um, catching the boat and well, going to Well, I can find somebody to buy some because, dog food and send it down for me. Because th th this, you know, th this, this is education. I wonder if they got rabbit food too. <laughs> but, you see, and the thing is, is, I mean, my point of view is that the man selling his thing reasonable. He can't keep his shelf on them full. Okay. Because they're selling out so fast. But these here, they want to get rich in a day and kill the small man with price. You're making a very Why good so? point, Carla. You know, then you go there, you see them now, they're waiting until it almost expire. Then to drop it down for a dollar for one, buy two and get one free and this kind of thing. It's ridiculous, man. You know? It's a lot of manipulation. 
the other thing is about the crime and things that are going on. This is uh, just a suggestion. From my country, I see they have a thing going on now. Okay, like we have the main police station. But these guys now, they set up a system where they have, you see, something like the food truck. Yeah. Something like that type of thing. Air condition. Mm -hmm. It can hold about four or five policemen comfortably. But we have, have a vehicle. We have it here. But I never see it. So how come when something happens in town, it's half an hour for a police to reach? <laughs> or if something happens down six hours, the next half an hour for some police to reach? Mm -hmm. We'd like to have anything at certain points. That as soon as something happens, at least they could call, yes, the men are driving a blue card on the way down to see cause they in five minutes, they don't have man in the Jeep waiting. Yes. Before I go call up, I would like to say something about policing and security. The community itself has a big part to play, and I don't think they're playing it for one reason or the other. For us to keep the crime under control, we the people in the community who are not police officers should always be prepared to give police officers information in terms of helping them to solve the crime. The other thing is, I believe that our police officers should be armed because you can't go there to fight people with guns with bare hands. You cannot go there with bare hands to fight people with guns. And we have a lot of elected representatives who are thinking, and I think it's the policy of the government, that they shouldn't arm these people. But if I were a police officer, I won't go. I would not go out there to deal with, with my bare hands to deal with a man who has a gun. But it, go, it goes for customs as well. From time I was in immigration, when I see one of my immigration officers nearly lost his life, I've been asking for them, particularly when the officers are going on those risky missions. missions. Yeah, they, they should, should be armed. They should be properly armed. I but, see that myself. Yeah. Because at one of the nightclubs and them, I saw this guy pull out a little three-inch blade, threatening a man. They call the police. The police come, see the man with the knife. They sit down in the jeep. The man cussing, he gets it on, he's coming up the police jeep. The men of the not come outside. They had to wait for another jeep with men with guns. Oh, okay. Come. You see why we need to have officers well, well, well protected? And but tell me, in the meantime, police was there. I mean, it's true what you're saying. These men need to get the gun because the way how things going, I mean, I wouldn't waste my life either. We exactly. have to protect our police officers. We cannot expect them to do what we expecting them to do. It is wrong. I would advocate even your men on patrol has to have some little thing because they're going into the stores these days all over the place. Hi there. Armed. Hi there. Med there. Yeah. Armed. Our police officers have to be protected like everybody else. Well, back to this question thing, I mean, we need some kind of consumer affairs or something, something to standardize the price. We need consumer of affairs. Stuff in this place. We need consumer affairs. I agree we need a department somewhere we to need deal with cons consumer affairs. We need affairs. consumer affairs. And we need because somebody to enforce the good business practices law. Consumer affairs is somebody you could go and make a complaint to. Yes. Right now, there's nobody to complain to. Nobody to complain. You 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 saying it on air here and the whole wall hearing, but that's the end of it. And we do need something to control the landlord from abusing the um, the tenant. Yeah. All right. We need well, laws guys, for that. <coughs> you guys keep up the good work and continue to be the voice of the people. Well, thank you, Carlo. The politicians that I'm listening. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you, you very for much. Your call. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, man, I hope everybody understands that instead of going St. Thomas now, we have to go Virgin Gara. Hmm? I, 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 I was shocked when I saw that. We have another call. Yeah. Yes, good evening. If you speak your mind, please turn your television set down, please. Please turn it. You, you got to turn your TV off or down because it's very loud. Turn your TV down. Yeah, okay, go ahead now. Yes, it's the matter of right? Yes. Carl was calling about this and he was talking about the police officer need to be asked. What you don't realize, the police officer, right? When they get the information, they let it out, right? So how could we solve crime in the country, right? If, if and that the is true. police officer who is ready to let us is not from here. Okay, if that is so, they need to be armed. Don't tell me the nonsense. Would you, would you go out there with your bare hands to disarm a man who has a gun? Put yourself, 
Put yourself. Put yourself in the police officer place. Would you do it? It's you see you see you see what ignorance goes on in the world. Mm -hmm. Would you go out there with your bare hands to disarm a man with a gun? The, the person hang up here already gone. They had a right. They know what nonsense mm -hmm. they're talking. Mm -hmm. The police officers need to be armed. Yeah. I I, I think I think too. Um, we probably have to look at the the caliber of police officers that we're getting. If you find a corrupt police officer, you got to get rid of him. Yeah. And I think, but that doesn't I think, mean that we mustn't think, protect their lives. I think the police should encourage other people in the force as well, other more senior people in the force as well. Yeah, and you could have somebody saying that the, you mustn't protect the lives of people. No, I think they should protect themselves and then protect the their lives. The police must be protected. They must protect what other themselves. country in the world that they send out people? We must, we must commend them when they make some good moves. Of course. Edmund. I, I see they've, they've written something I now. have seen they've the police something. officers done things. They've written something I'm now recently yeah. about, about um, um, we call it, uh, rental cars mm -hmm. being rented with blackout. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that they think we, sh we should have some kind of um, regulation against mm -hmm. that. I think, I think it's dangerous for the public and the police officers. There's that one thing and there's something with some cars who have an extra blue way and light. Yeah. That, um, yeah. Yeah, but the one with the the one with the with the rented cars. Yeah. Okay. A, a police well, officer. Have a with that already. A police officer without a a, a, a vest on, mm -hmm. a, a bulletproof vest on, mm -hmm. and someone has a, a weapon inside of a car. Mm -hmm. They could just they could just uh, take them out. Take them out one time. Yeah, and I think the police make a good point that we don't have any regulation against. Um, well, this ain't the, the, car, this ain't the, the last car. time I'm going to say it, Cody. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. continue to say on my show, yeah. we need to protect our police officers. Yeah. We cannot expect our police officers to go out there mm -hmm. barehanded. With families. They have the families. They have their families. But they're human beings like they're the rest of us. They're human beings like all of us, exactly. Anyway, we might we might be unpopular for that, but I will be unpopular for that. that. That's that's, that's uh, you know. I will be so. unpopular for that. I would continue to advocate mm -hmm. that we have to protect the not only police officers, customs, customs officers, immigration, immigration, security officers. You imagine those guys that go out on the boats, out behind Virgin Garda, behind, oh, behind, behind Norman Island. Island, behind Peter Island. And they have uh, no weapon. No and, weapons. And they're dealing with when criminal they're going elements. Meet machine guns. Yeah, with machine guns. Yeah, we we've People been playing be we've been playing Russian roulette with our, our oh. citizens, and I think we need to stop it because it's 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 it's, it's an accident if waiting. If I happen. were a police officer and my boss sent me, I wouldn't go. You mean a law enforcement officer? Okay, let's put the whole of them all together. Right. Law enforcement. I wouldn't go. You wouldn't go. We got another call. We have another call. Thank you for calling. Do you wish to speak your mind? Go right ahead, please. Yeah. Call up. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, Mr. Maddo. Yes, sir. I have a question to raise to you again, right? Of course. That's what I'm here for tonight. We have a question that I'd like to raise to you, right? Uh huh. A person that's born in that all, I have a driver license, right? Yes. And. He's going to renew his driver's license and he went to the traffic department and they told him he can't renew his driver's license because he don't have a passport, right? Yes. How could he represent a passport to renew his driver's license and you don't have one and you don't issue my driver's license because his mother is not from here and his father is from here, right? Can we wait for the young people to enter Will that to I, I totally agree with you, Carla. There's yeah. something else to it. Remember, then the you see, you, you let me respond. You, you're not letting me respond. Yeah. You, you asked me a question. You yeah. asked me a question and you let me answer it. It's the Maduro Court in the Castro, right? Yeah. I'm a main favorite man about you. I don't see the rest of my name, right? Mm -hmm. I watch your eyes back and I listen to your eyes show. Mm -hmm. And I think you need the correct those people along in the traffic department, I don't know if the man phrase, I'm in charge, put some sense in the head. If you know all the time, a lot of good shows, they have mm -hmm. a good show, they need to put a lot of sense in the people who work in the traffic department. You call it, you know what else is wrong? If you are, if you're from the, some other island and you are here, yeah. and you don't have something or the other, you can't get your tr your, your um, driver's license renewed. But that's what I mean, how could you win the country? And I will the, the, the tie in your work, 
So when you say, well, let me tell this is what I don't like. No, I really don't like this. I'm trying to speak to him and tell him what it is and he won't listen. He, he know, man. He's telling you it's a work permit. But he's know. saying it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Give me a chance to respond. Mm -hmm. What is happening is that that law Turn on your TV. Turn on your TV, please. What needs to happen yeah. is that that law needs to be revisited. Mm -hmm. A driver's license has nothing to do with a work permit. Mm -hmm. Nothing whatsoever. A tourist could come here and they can get a driver's license. Mm -hmm. It is ignorance and whoever drafted that law, something is wrong with the mental capacity. Mm. Whoever put that measure in, it's abusive and we need to have that change first thing. That would be one of the first things you got to put out of the way. Mm. Coming back to these passport problems and whatnot, we must find a way to give the poor people something for identification. Mm -hmm. We must find a way to help them out of their problems. They're not dogs. Mm -hmm. They're human beings like us. Mm -hmm. Hey, mom, before I forget though, right? The, the youth development that someone had called and talked about. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that I saw the Law Reform Commission put out some information about uh, children and, um, and their rights. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're speaking to the, the, the legitimacy mm -hmm. of, of, of um, children born in, in and out of wedlock. And how in our country up to this day, children born out of wedlock are not afforded the same rights well, as me. children born in wedlock. And it is wrong and it needs to be fixed. I was invited by the same law um, reform, reform mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was the first to say to them, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. there's no difference between a child born inside wedlock mm -hmm. or outside wedlock. Right. A child is and a human being like and, uh, everybody else. And Edmund, I'm saying to you. And uh, I'm saying to you. Yeah. Let me express myself. Go ahead. I'm saying to you that we should have a law that entitles that child to what his father and his mother has. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. then, if that is so, if you're going to treat that child that way because he's born out of wedlock, then you should charge the father who get him for committing a crime. <laughs> but but I know I know that's that's your take on it. But my, my take on it is that all the uh, elected officials or, or, or want to be politicians who are out there talking now, they need to address that issue and let the public know of what is their position on it. Good evening. You have reached speak your mind. Go right ahead, please. Hi, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. That was a good question by the caller that called just now, right? It's very important. If they do have to get a driver, a, a, the concern is about a driver's license. Yes. If you have to get a driver's license, right? Yes. Then the Labor Department, if you're not from here, should have issued you a document concerning that you have to have an issue. You have to do some, some sort of a process or something going through for a driver's license. Mm -hmm. It's not when you reach the, to the department, then you have to go in to get, show your work permit to get a driver's license, that's wrong. Carla, let me put it this way. It is stupid to tell a man he must have time in his passport when you know very well this man has been working here for X years, he has applied to labor and immigration for renewal, and all he's doing is waiting on it. It is downright stupidness to deny that man a renewal of his driver's license. Why well, Mr. Maduro point been taken, and I really agree with you, right? I cannot see that the Labor Department and also the Immigration Department is giving you a work permit for the non-belongers them and then when they come here to drive, then they're telling you that you have to get your work permit. Why don't uh, you issue but, everything one time? If you were for medical, mm -hmm. if you What I'm saying, the two are not related at all. Then, but, it it but, is not a concern of the traffic department whether you have a work permit or not. But Carla, you know what it's going to do? It's going to put more unlicensed and uninsured people on the road. And they're going to have accidents that are, as you Sir Courtney, they're uninsured and you're gonna have a lot of problems with it. It's yes, stupidity. You can't see that you're driving here for X amount of years. Um, it's not a, it's not somebody who comes two, three years and then when you look into it, then you pull up the file in the traffic department and you look, you see, oh you live in here for ten years. For Fifteen, sixteen years. Just a minute, Mr. Maduro. Uh -huh. a, a man been driving for 15, 16 years and then you tell him, Oh, we would like to see your work permit or your passport to see if you have time inside. That's the immigration department. Exactly. Thing. In, in 
nothing to do with the work permit from labor, it's nothing to do with nothing from the Department of Immigration. This is driving. If you have an issue dealing with the ICE and you want to deal with stuff like we want to give you back a test or a whatever, it's no problem. But don't, they don't implicate immigration and labor in that, 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 that field. They have nothing to do with it. It nothing to do with it. Exactly. So I agree with that caller that called just now, and I wish many more calls for that because I agree with people, the people them here who is non belonger or what you're in barn here, right? Yeah. And now they become like 18, 19 years, and then they have to go through a lot. So yes. We have to see your exemption. We have to see this. If they pass the test, they pass the test. And they should be issued a license because they're born here. Mm -hmm. Well, Carla, agree? well, Carla, the, I think the, I think the the, um, the DMV is going to make a little bit of money. Number one, because they're going to issue a lot less driver's license, and number two, I think a lot more people are going to be on the road without license and insurance. I honestly feel so. Carla, a lot of people don't like to hear I, I me guess talk it's about this problem. Thing because I it's not, no, it's not a money it's making not a thing. Money it's, thing. It's actually uh, something that's going to drop the revenue. Oh. I, I suggest that's the only thing, but they should get themselves of a grip of something because if 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 if, if, if we go into immigration, immigration tell us, well, look, it's twenty five dollars for your time, and we deal with your time. Not when you go into license, license, tell you, well, I want to see immigration time. What for? Then, 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 what? Why you want to see that for? Carla, we that's are talking about. about we are talking about somebody who's been living here for nineteen years. What does immigration and labor have to do with him getting a um, driver's license? That's what I just told you. That's what I just told you. Nothing at all. Somebody. It's stupidity. That, that's what I just told you. Somebody Even if it's written in the law. Over five years. That's over five years. I was just saying that somebody, three, four years, if you want to make an issue for that, it's okay. But I don't it, matter. You said, as far as I'm concerned, the two are labor and immigration are not related to a driver's license. Stop but harassing it, it, the people. It's abuse of their human rights. I think we need some more color for this, this this issue, of course, because, you know, getting into immigration and labor, labor, they don't tell you already, everyone is everything. You don't have to bring your work permit and bring your passport to proving to the licensing department that you have time in the island to just get a driver's license. As you said, when the tourists then come, oh, yes, how much you want? Three months? Four months? Then you get it. So what happens to we? Then we don't count. Oh. What happened to the United States citizen who come here as a tourist and they on a passport? They got a driver's license. They go right to the same department and get a temporary get driver's license. Don't you see the ignorance? Okay, thank you very much. Let me give some callers more some chances. I don't want okay. to take the line up, but I think that's a very important topic. And thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, Mr. Edmund, thank you. Thank, thank you for your call. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. My boy, my name is this. Courtney, this way is here, like this show where we're having people call in and expressing yeah. themselves. We got a lot of texts. We there. got a lot of texts. How we get them answered? <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to try. You got to go look at them to, to, to mm -hmm. see what we got. See what they say. It's 26. Mm -hmm. oh, we got you got another call. Yeah, good evening. You're free speaking mind. Go right ahead, please. Go right ahead. Good night. How are you? We're trying to stay alive. You have to speak into the microphone. Good night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could you speak Hello. a bit, a lot louder, please? Yes, good night, and good how night. are you? Okay, we're fine. Okay, um, I just have a concern, concerning the written test for the traffic. Um, I noticed when you do the written test here, if you don't get time, maybe how you're working and stuff, I got to go and test itself. The, what I noticed that they would tell you after here, you have to come back and do the written test. And I think that doesn't make any sense. Because once you do the written test, that should um, allow you that you could go in and um, get back that um, paper, the license. Mm -hmm. You could go in and get it back. So you have to go back to go and do the written test. And that doesn't make much of a sense at all. Mm -hmm. You could have that for how long, just as you, know, you have the driver's license. Mm -hmm. And you go in and get it renewed. I think that will be much better. You pay whatever money you have to pay and renew your um, your your um, the things that you have done to go to the driving test. You see, common sense would tell the immigration department that you know this child is here. It has a restriction with the. British Nationality Act. Mm -hmm. So they must find some sort of provisionary paper mm -hmm. so that everybody knows that this child has a right to be here. Mm -hmm. Even though they can't have a BVI passport, mm -hmm. it has a right to be here. Mm -hmm. And that would stop all the nonsense. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very because much. Because we need more show like these. People mm -hmm. need to expose and express what is happening to them. Their concerns. They got. They got yeah. to be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. We got. So we got a lot of things in company. <laughs> you look like he's saying you're full. Okay, we have a man. Why do we have tax returns? Why do we not have tax returns? Do you have your tax returns? Mm. We got a call here. Good evening, you're free speaking mind. Go right ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, I think that. Yeah, turn off your TV. Yeah, this is my daughter. Yes. Right? That is my daughter. Yeah. I think you misunderstand the cause. The person is a Catholic born, right? And they refuse him to renew his driver license because he didn't have a passport. Right? I think the caller misunderstand what you're saying, right? Because he's not he's not on work permit, not he born to Tola. Okay. No, I understand all of that. Have his status from here. His father's from here? Yeah. Well, Jesus. Then he's from, then he's from here. But he's a citizen by descent. Yeah, he's a citizen. They refuse to resume his driver license. But you see, you see the madness what is happening in this little place? Yeah, yeah, that's what the call of misunderstanding. That's the body and the police are not just. He's a Catholic man, a young guy who went to high school, went to college. And his father, his father's yeah. a B.B.A. Lander. B.B.A. Lander. Jesus. <laughs> you, that, is that really happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Courtney, you believe that happening? Yeah. See you. Do you have a name? I don't pray to mention my name in it. No, no, don't matter mention your name. <laughs> I want to come up down that somebody to ban it. Let me tell you what I just say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that is a height of ignorance. You hear what I tell you? Let me tell you what I just say, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I know you're down by you, but not a lot now. Alright. I don't pray to come by Thank you. Thank, Thank you for being on the show. But Good. The man is a band that's all you on. He went to school, college, everything. Everything. Papa drive a license, mm. and they refuse him. He have a school the license, and refuse him. They are rejoicing because they say you don't have a passport. Okay. And they won't give you the passport. <laughs> you see, the government ain't going to stop the nonsense until these yeah. people are class suit on them. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, sue yeah. them for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's go after them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for clarifying the matter. Yeah, okay, Mr. Maduro. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what a thing. The man is a citizen by descent. Yeah. So I was I was trying to get in my little word about the um the the children mm -hmm. the, the legitimacy act that we, we okay we got. Are you in trouble? Yeah. Good evening. <laughs> if you speak your mind, go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good night. Good night. Good night. I have a quick question okay. Please um, and a comment. I don't have any problem, right, that the children who are born to outsiders cannot get a passport. Uh -huh. But the problem that I have is why do the children have to go to immigration every year to renew their time? I don't think that's fair at all to have to pay $25 every year. I think that's unfair. Carla, I'm with you. I'm that, sympathizing that, that. with you. And I think, as I was just mentioning to Courtney, I don't know if it went over the air, that we need a special document to put in the hands of these kids so that they can live peacefully, live a comfortable life. You can't give them a passport because of the British Nationality Act, but we have to be able to find something to identify who they are. Definitely. Yeah. The thing has to be revisited, and we have to find a way to make these children's lives more comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's because, I mean, to me, I wonder what I mean. Why should I tell my children that they are from? I mean, they are BG Islanders, but they cannot get a passport and they still, and they still have to pay for time for them. Just like I, ho I have to pay for time every year, so yes. where do I tell the child that the child is from? <laughs> Carla, Carla, you, 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 you reminded me of a very serious situation as well, where if you could understand if there's an illegitimate child, where that could even be more complicated because the, the father is actually from here. Anyways. Okay. And um, I was saying to my colleague here while we were off the air that the people who are out there politicking at this time should be telling the young people who they have having following them, who they're leading. They should tell them about this Legitimacy Act and what is their position on it. Yep. Because that thing should have been changed long ago. It should have been changed long ago. You can't have two sets of people growing up in one country where one set have rights and another set have no rights. No rights. Definitely. 
Anyway, so, thank you very much. Thank you for your call. There are lots of problems that we got to face in the near future. Mm -hmm. And we need people who could look at them and help the people. We need people who could take serious decisions. Right. And make, make responsible you know, decisions in the right. community for the welfare of the, of right. the country. Right. And to improve the economy. We, we don't have anyone talking about improving exactly. the economy. You know, who but we have so much problems, Courtney, I don't think we get around to the economy. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get around to the economy. And if we don't get around to the economy, we're dead. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've, we've, we've reached to that point in the show, Edmund, where unless you have any last words to say, I would like to finally wrap up. And Courtney, say. all I want to say is thank God for the callers tonight. They made this show one of the best we've ever had. Good. And we want these shows to go on the same way on all the way through elections mm -hmm. so that people can express themselves and uncover things that need to be uncovered and put our representative in a position where they have to address them. Right. And on that note, I'm going to say God bless the Virgin Islands and the people that live in them. And we'll see you again next week.